Good day, guys. I hope you are doing well and your families too. Um, we are also there. This corona is taking everything from us, so we are just relaxing and trying to see how things will go. So, um, as you people say, you know, things keep time. So, me, I'm there. Well, um, we are happy to be here once again and uh, the opportunity to go through what we've been doing over the last few weeks. I know it's not been enjoyable, but um, it's the best way to, I mean, make up for what we can't get. Because when time flies, it hasn't come back. It's the only thing that goes up and never come, uh, comes down. So, yeah, we'll take it just like that. Um, um, this morning, I'm already in the office and uh, doing this so that... Um, we can finish with our last two lectures and then prepare for exam. So after this week, next week, there will be another video broadcast on YouTube again, and then that will be it. So we have this week and next week to finish our course for this semester. I'm sure you have enjoyed um, the content delivery and uh, every other thing. The only thing I know you don't enjoy are the slides that I'm not giving you. But meanwhile, I know some of you have been taking pictures of the slides and doing all kinds of things to it. Yes, I know. But the earlier ones, oh, to me, Drew Kurawinya, Judy, Bomodi Nessia, some of you have even been downloading the videos. Well, um, I knew all these will happen when I subscribed to this method because I don't have an, I didn't have an option. It's fine, anyway. But um, let's talk about some practical issues before we go into the lecture. First and foremost, I'm still saying that a good number of you are still not on Sakai and not been answering the questions. There are about 1,200 of you now on Sakai, but only about 600 have been answering the questions on Sakai. Um, this is the way to go. I've told you that, fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for you, the university has decided that we do 70% cumulative assessment. 70% cumulative assessment. And then uh, we'll take 30% of exams. So that is what we're doing for this semester, particularly with this course. Yeah, it may change in other courses anyway, but then for me, I'm going by what the university has said, 70, 30, 70 cumulative. That means that the many, um, how do you call it, uh, class assessment that we have done based on each lecture, all of that, I'm going to culminate them to answer. And so if you are not answering the questions, you are not doing me good, you are not doing me bad, you are, you are just hurting your own self. So, I don't know what I can do. The I, again, very few of you did it, about 600. And if you realize the I, I divided you into two. Uh -huh. There was the IA real and the real IA. Uh -huh. I needed to give it a name that you people, you, uh, I know, uh, before you think me, I have taught. And then, because some of you two, when you do the norm, uh, the class assessment, you, the answers, as soon as you answer, the answer pop up. Some of you were taking shots of it and getting the answers and sending to your friends. Oh, boy, you are interested, you know. Oh, when you're two, now they are moving on when you're 10. <laughs> but you like it. So, maybe there's a meeting baby. So, that is why I started thinking. So, to this extent, I did it to the extent that when you answer, you will see your response and the answer back until the following day. Mm -hmm. So those who didn't see your grades, if you go now and check into your grade books, you see that the responses are there. So uh, that, that is how I've set it, so that you get to see for yourself. And then if there are discrepancies, we can work it out. But then, because of some of your behavior, that is why I had to do it that way, so that um, you, you take it cool. And I've been randomizing the questions. And so uh, someone's question one is your question 10. <laughs> So you can go on and cheat if you, uh, if you want to cheat the system, fine. But as for me, what I get is what I work with. And um, again, uh, let's put ourselves together and see. I've told you that we're going to uh, do the exam 30% and that is going to be on Sakai. 
we're going to take the exam on Sakai. So I'll teach this week. Next week, I'll also come your way. And then the following week, there wouldn't be anything. It's your revision week. And then the week after, you can now take the exam. So from what I'm saying, if I look at the calendar, um, um, today is 7th, 14th, I'll come your way. 21st will be, uh, what do you call, your revision week. And then 28th, you will have the exam. So we'll take our exam on 28th of May, 28th of May. So get yourself prepared and let's um, go through. And I'm sure that all of you will pass because I want all, every one of you to pass. No, there's no reason to stay. So, but then I can't give free marks. It's what you earn that you get. And so try as much as possible to follow it through and then let's see how things will. And certainly today and next week after the lecture, there will be assessment on Sakai. If you do it, fine. If you don't do it, well, as for me, I'm just greedy. And that is what I'm going to put together. So let's get ready for our interactions. If you have any questions, those of you who have not been doing tutorials and all of that, contact uh, my able assistants, Bumuni and Albert. And they, they are more than willing. They are very good and great to help you. So uh, I guess that will be it for a few uh, notices so that we can get into our lecture for today and see how things will go. So let's stream on and let's get going. <laughs> All right, sure. So we have had discussions on um, the beginnings of Christianity. We've come through to the beliefs and practices, and then <clears throat> we are now focusing on Africa and largely the attention is on Ghana. And um, we saw largely two major classifications of the Christian practice in Ghana and in Africa. We put together the historical mainline churches and then the Pentecostal churches. Last week, we dealt with, uh, last two weeks, I, I should say, we dealt with the historical mainline churches. We saw some of the practices, some of the things they do and the way they do them. Sometimes, you, you no, hell, my software, no, what, what happens? No, she suits. Now, <laughs> Anyway, so Yanko, let's go to my people. Those, those we see jambo, 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 jambo. Yeah, that's fine. So for today, we are going to uh, have a look at the African Christian to the Pentecostal and Charismatic uh, churches. And uh, if you look at the picture, it's uh, a picture of one would say the Acts chapter 2 experience. But it's interesting also because, particularly <laughs> these days, when the charismatic people meet, this is when they form a circle and someone, and then they are doing, they are, they are praying, you see, you hear, Kaya, 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 and then <laughs> they will be playing music at the background. Kaya, 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 Hey, Charlie, so when I saw this picture, I said, Ah, any uncle for me, you know, they have been doing this since time immemorial. Yeah, they are good for you. They will go Ghana. Anyway, so <coughs> that's the Pentecostal churches for you. And um, if we look at the Pentecostal churches, we see that um, they come in with uh, all kinds of greed, all kinds of uh, attention, and all kinds of activities. And that is why um, we uh, subscribe to them and the kind of things that they do. Uh, guys, so you see this mood that I'm talking about, that when you go to the churches and the young men are praying and they are playing the music and they are doing those things. Ha! Ah, it's interesting. You know, what do we both do? <laughs> ah, well, anyway, so Pentecostalism and Charismatism in Africa. Now, let's begin by identifying what Pentecostalism is all about. And we are saying that Pentecostalism is an expression of the Christian faith 
that places special emphasis on personal experience of God through Holy Spirit baptism. And so according to Pentecostal theology, if um, you are a Christian, you must have had a, a, a personal encounter. So it's like they put a lot of emphasis on um, your new birth. And usually they call it, sometimes they call it born again. Uh -huh. And then sometimes they even call it your second birthday and stuff like that. So there is so much emphasis on personal devotion and personal encounter. To that effect, um, you must have the Holy Spirit in you. As to what that means, uh, I am I don't understand. So you <laughs> let me say it as I know. And then the term Pentecostal is derived from Pentecost, which was the Greek uh, uh, in Greek, but it was the Jewish um, feast of weeks. Jewish feast of so it was a feastful day that uh, the Christians took on the name. And then again, for Christians, this event commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the followers of Jesus Christ, as described in Acts chapter 2. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, we are told that after Jesus went, uh, uh, when he was ascending, he told the disciples that they should wait for him in uh, in Jerusalem and that the comforter or whatever <laughs> he will come to them. And then they are said to have gathered in a room on that day, there were about 120 people, and uh, he said a sound of a mighty rush, something, something like fire, settled on their heads. And you saw that in the picture that we just showed. So, like you can see in the picture, you see that there, there's something like fire on their heads, uh, and that is supposed to be the symbol of the Holy Spirit that came on the disciples. And then by that, they became. <clears throat> new persons <laughs> they changed and on that day because it was the jewish feast people had traveled from all other places to jerusalem to commemorate the feast and then they heard the apostles uh, praying and seeing all kinds of things those things that they do in check those things uh -huh, that <laughs> you don't know what they are saying when you even ask it themselves they can't explain to you mm, no so they say all of these things and then uh, they question them and uh, peter is said to have spoken to them about christ and about three thousand of them gave their life to christ and so that is about um the Acts chapter 2 experience and that is where the christians pick up the idea of the holy spirit now between the Acts chapter 2 experience and a modern period we say that you do not find the expression of the holy spirit some people believe so but then in the uh, in america there is what we call the azusa street encounter uh in april 1906 1906 uh, where we are told that a group of christians uh came together and they had the experience that was similar that was similar to the Acts chapter 2 experience um this whole thing started with um charles fox parham who had a group and was teaching on faith and believe in the holy spirit holy spirit baptism and all of that and there was this other african william joseph Semmel, and you can see his picture on the slide who is an african uh, who was who also had interest in the teachings of uh, charles parham and then uh, owing to that uh, he also started a few things. They started praying and in Azusa Street um, 312, that is the address. So we call it the Azusa Street Encounter. The Azusa Street uh, Church received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it came upon them, and a lot of people trooped to the U.S. to catch that fire and send to their nations. And uh, from that uh, early 20th century, now we saw that the holy spirit baptism and its activity in fact uh, if you want to that is why i'm encouraging you to stay on and read religion in level 400 there is a course in pentecostalism where we will explain this better and deeper so i'm just giving you the surface of it uh, so that um, you you develop the taste so please my enjoy caution right religion is good though. it's good you build faith you you get employment and you learn about yourself right so that's the Azusa street encounter and the four runners were charles fox parham and then william 
Joseph Semu. Now, um, let's uh, say that studies have been able to put together the, you see, in scholarship, the mark of scholarship is classification, your ability to classify and put into boxes. And so scholarship has been able to classify the Pentecostal breed. Because look, you can't put, for instance, um, um, the Papa, uh -huh, Archbishop Duncan William, you can't put him in the same category as Obinim. Uh -huh, you see, so we may have to look at their trends and classify them. And so largely I'm following the classification donated by the former moderator of the Presbyterian Church, um, who was my lecturer uh, when I was doing my first degree. And uh, he also taught me when I was doing my PhD, um, Professor Omenyo, uh, Right Reverend Professor Sefasna Omenyo. And um, he was a member of faculty and um, he classified this, the Pentecostal breed into the following. If you read his book, uh, the, the, there is a copy at the Religions Department Library, Pentecost Outside Pentecostalism. You would uh, come to the uh, many of the things that we are doing. That is the text I'm using for this week, Pentecost Outside Pentecostalism um, by Professor Sifas Omenyo, and you learn a lot from there. So we see that uh, he has about a sex classification of the classifications of the Pentecostal breed. We have the AICs, the African Initiated Churches and all that. And then we have the classical Pentecostals. We have new Pentecostal fellowship. We have Pentecostalism in the mainline churches. That is about renewal groups. And then we have the charismatic movement. And then we have the new prophetic movement. And then uh, uh, even Professor Abanfo Atiemu adds on to the prophetic groups and others so that we can learn more. But for now, <clears throat> let's stay with this six, yeah. So when we take the AICs, AICs, they are, they, they are sometimes co uh, called different uh, names. And uh, so they are AICs, African Independent Churches, African Initiated Churches, African um, uh, Indigenous Churches. Now these churches began in, around the 1940s through to 1914, 1914 to about 1930. A lot of them uh, came out. And they uh, res um, came up as a result of some deficiencies, uh, inadequacies in the mainline churches. And this was because, for instance, when the mainline churches came, they were saying something like, which, there's nothing like witchcraft, and as a Christian, you don't have to believe in witchcraft and all of those things. Now, you see, and then when they meet, they sing uh, foreign songs into Womushia. Then they are singing, Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching I mean, from one or two, oh, when the saints go marching, even you, as you are, when you go to church and they sing uh, all kinds of songs. L let me think about one of your songs. And I I'm thirsty for you. Uh, those things, those things that you have been singing. Or well, sometimes it says, uh, Mighty, you are mighty, Lord. Those songs are. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. But you see, when you sing all those songs, a song like How Sweet the Name of Jesus, How Sweet the Name of Jesus, yes, it's fine. But then when you sing it in P, you see that the song resonates because hey, you know you But they were and, 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 but they were singing other songs. Um Jesus needs in the Jesinyasuma. O to ni yao ye ni ya redu o to ni su nina. How sweet the name of you see, look at these two. And you can feel so the Africans wanted to sing songs in their language, but the Europeans were singing in English, and many of them uh, were having problems. And they didn't. So these other churches came together. They, 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 they erupted because they felt that the Christian expression was not did not resonate with the African faith, and then and so they needed to be able to express it in the African way. That was why these churches sprang up. So they combine the African indigenous religion with Christianity. So you see them 
expressing the African faith in a Christian uh, uh, manner. They stress healing, protection from evil and spiritual forces. So that they see, as Africans, Bibia, <laughs> uh, Biti says that the African is incredibly religious. I mean, Bibia basi Bia. Yeah, if you check what say, religion will say, so also that no pana, one a man will pull it. When a man will see, mm, I seem be able to African or oh, hold in some kind of see me being Yes, that's it. We are going to be able to be on so say the Nasa Kakana nature is over with two grand. You see, yeah, the Bibia religion will be beyond to assume, but the Europeans felt that the mainline church that was introduced by the Europeans did not resonate with some of these things, and that was why they um they they, they came up and so. Uh, they did a lot of script they use a lot of the scriptures that have been translated and then they also use traditional contexts the needs of of the african they know we have bible let's pray and thank god you say but my also for nanka say let's pray against Witches and wizards in our family. Obetina go fasha say no mu bomu sem no mu bomu sem no omasha sadia na say kaya 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 no mu bo kenin so wa say bum bedu bum bedu bum bedu bum bedu kaya kaya na me bomu sem bom paya eh eh sa no mu pe ye ya dia go bo so all these things were used the rise of um the a lot of mass conversion the the springing up of prayer groups the rise of prophetism and denominational Christianity also when uh, you can see it as part of the AICs. So in Ghana, the AICs are usually described as Sun Sum Sore. Sun Sum Sore, spiritual churches. That is what it means. <laughs> Sun Sum Sore. <laughs> Just say, yeah, 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 go Catholic, you know, yeah, they are so they do Sun Sum Sun Sum Sun Sum Sun 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 they will tell you that there is a, a spirit behind it. Um, <laughs> a friend tells me of um, what do you call one of her, his mad grandmother belongs to one of these churches. And uh, oh, yeah, I say, and interesting, many of them are rules uh, around the coast in, in Fanti. He says that, oh, uh, no, 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 now also busy uh by an appetite say free in the gabriel who busy by an appetite say free now do you know peter pay say free you see the fantasies have uh, a certain gravy it's full of fish fresh fish and so mom mom and tv man i would be we win the the fantasies they uh, so it is full of fresh fish usually they use salmon and then a little of a little vegetable, I be ane akono. Hey, obo fu no tim bosso eno obo no tim pampa. Enim tim pampa. The tea that uh, the milo and the milk a cream. <laughs> milo and the milk a cream. So when we are even staring, it's like a rock. Uh -huh. That is what obo fu said you do. Hey. Mm. So like I, that those are the spiritual churches. And like I said, the name AIC could mean African Independent Church. African initiated church, African indigenous churches, and African instituted churches. So the I could be translated in so many ways. Now, examples of some of the uh, AICs are Aladura Pentecostal Church, Messianic Church, Zionist Church, Mozama Disco Christo Church. My God! I <laughs> hear in Mozama when they go, uh, what do you call? Uh, oh my yeah, sorry, I say you do school. <laughs> oh my yeah, sorry, I need to do can you be answering chef? Hey, you ever did a good boy? I'm sorry, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, research has shown that that is not their emphasis. Their emphasis on disco is to say that um, darkness, and so they put a lot of uh, I mean, being secluded, uh huh, and so they put a lot of emphasis on fasting and prayer and midnight watch yeah usually like the picture you can see you see the across and all of that 
and then in cancer charabin and seraphine church celestial church of christ there are so many of them that are around so that you can understand and these are yeah we describe them as pentecostal because the emphasis is on the holy spirit so, 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 my god <laughs> they'll be jumping here and there and some of the forerunners of the of the aics has been wale harris who was a librarian from the crew tribe uh, tribe uh it's a major influence on the um aics he started it and all of the we will explain all these if you stay on and do religion in particular and then john swatson and samson upon who are uh also agents that came to Ghana, but uh, Samson Upon is a Ghanaian. He worked largely in uh, Brown and Halfway in Ashanti region, and he was noted for Sebi Tutu. Ha! Obi Tutu, and like what Harris. Oh, I mean, all of them. One of the things that you find amongst them is uh, the casting away of uh, Abosun, like, eh, uh, chira Abosun, nana chira Abosun. So, for, hey, sorry, you oh. see, that, that party, metro abado, gum, gum, he got it when he come. So he's been breaking a lot of witchcraft into um, CB22. And you can see a picture of uh, Wadi Harris is the one on your right, the one in white. And you see some similarities amongst them. And Samson Upon is the other one in the black. I don't know whether to call it cassock or gown or <laughs> robe, what the, what the Paris this way. But you, you see the way they dress and the way they do their things. Yeah. Now, characteristics of the AIs is usually they wear long dresses, <laughs> as you can see in the picture, long dresses, and then uh, they do not wear slippers. Most of them believe in the, they say that when Moses uh, uh, encountered God in the burning fire, he was asked to remove his slippers, and so they removed their slippers. Then I visited one of them uh, on one occasion, and they said that, uh, so, so, you have stepped on a certain feces and you bring it to church and make the place smell and all of that. And I'm saying, hey, 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 but that is, but based, like the, the doctrine is based on um, the Moses encounter. And then they keep long hours at church. When you go to church, Ah, my goodness. <laughs> also, I get a soon soon no oko. So both don't call your one point. So they don't, they have a starting time, but they don't have a closing time. My God. So when they go, they, they pray, uh, they dance, they sing, they do all kinds of things. They blend the African tradition with Christianity that I've said already. The way they practice Christianity is quite interesting. They stress purity, 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 purity. And then they engage in fasting. There are no gender division in many of the churches. You know that uh, as a, even in the mainline churches, they have had a long discussion before women could become priests. But in the AICs, women and a lot of the times women are are suffering. They, they they take on that and all of that. And so these are some of their characteristics. One that was not included was the fact that their dances are vigorous. Hey, the way the woman was dancing with the child behind her. And I don't do to put it slow with you. And they sang the indigenous songs. And Abraham called Abraham, I call honey, Razuka, Jenny, there. Abraham, Abraham, eh, ya want to ask us as part of the one yard, Brabo, pa, one jar, bonny, eh, na, want to not train him. And when they are singing the song, uh, they have a way of doing their hands, you see. They do their hands like this, uh huh. And I'll catch and they want to not train him. Mo and your bon, it's the one yard, a bad, 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 a and so that is what they do in their churches and it's interesting yeah now let's look at the classical pentecostals 
When we talk about the classical Pentecostals, they arose around 1931, and they are largely through the Assemblies of God's Church and who entered through the northern part of Ghana. And uh, when they entered, they, their main strategy was to say that once the chiefs are converted, they will also um, convert the members are, are, are beneath them. And so, <clears throat> largely through the north, they built a lot of hospitals in Yendi, Sabuba, and Wale Wale. They are very strong. But then, um, financial aid was a challenge for them, and um, Western dependency uh, brought them to a halt in some areas. And so, their influence um, did not trickle down too early. However, um, the uh, so like when we talk about the class cap and we are talking about the um assemblies of god the church of pentecost the apostolic church and christ apostolic uh -huh. so these churches now um the other three the church of pentecost the apostolic church and the christ apostolic church were are largely influenced by two people the first is peter enim who is Ghanaian, and um the second is apostle james Marcion. Uh -huh. and um, we know that uh, if we want to quickly go through the history apostle enim uh, had an interest, he's been writing, reading a lot of journals, and then he saw uh, that he could be healed. He was secular himself, and so he believed in spiritual healing. And so, um, at a point, when he saw that the uh, apostolic church was doing well, he wrote to them, and then they sent James Marcion, and they had a group who, who met at Asamankasi, where the a similar episode of the Acts chapter two experience was felt in Ghana here, yeah, in Asamankasi, and so they called on the Apostolic Church, who brought Makion, Makion came, and then because Apostle Lenin believed in spiritual healing, Makion fell sick, and they needed to be healed. They needed to go to the hospital. They said no, you can't go to the hospital because it's against our faith. And then he was taken to the hospital by the governor when he came back, the people said, no, you had broken our doctrine and whatever. So they broke away, Peter Nim broke away, and instead of the apostolic church, they put Christ, so that they did it, Christ apostolic church. And then James McKeon also had problems with the apostolic church way back in Bradford, and then bit and bit, he also broke away and formed the church of Pentecost. And so you see the genesis and the way it flows. So that is the classical Pentecostals. They are quite dogmatic they are quite slow compared to the others but they are very strong and built up their ranks and in so many ways they resemble the mainline churches but then they are um largely uh, pentecostal because they put a lot of emphasis on the holy spirit and everything uh, when you meet the church of pentecost say <laughs> yeah so you can see a picture of james mckeon and his wife and then um, the kind of things that happen. So we are seeing that Pentecostalism in Ghana has roots in the movement started by a Ghanaian Protestant lay Christian man, uh, Apostle Enim in Asamankesi in the 1930s. Peter James Marcion from the Apostolic Church Bradford came in 1937 and then led to a series of breakaway that, just as I have uh, told you, forming the Christ Apostolic and the Church of Pentecost. So that is how they also came into being and they do their things in quite an interesting way. Now let's look at the charismatic churches. You, you saw we are we are going through the six categories so that we can appreciate them. The charismatic churches are direct offsprings of uh, non-denominational evangelical fellowships that were prominent in the early mid 1960s to early 1970s. Now these churches um, were largely uh, formed uh, uh, when they started, they were like, Oh, yeah, fellowship. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 we are just a prayer group. We are so, oh, it doesn't matter what church, so it is non denominational. You just come. We only believe in holiness, we only believe in righteousness, we only believe in the study of the word of God, we only believe in revival, we only believe in prayer. And the charismatic churches were in Africa, 
are largely influenced by the Archbishop uh, Benson Idahusa. Nidin Penomati. Yeah. And um, some of their practices were not accepted in the existing churches. Because you see, for some of them, uh, like, uh, uh, for instance, last week I was mentioning that many of them belong to various churches, like, um, uh, what do you call? Oh, Mensa Utabel, Pastor Mensa Utabel was uh, an Anglican, and but some of the practices that they were exhuming, because you, I mean, why are we metrics in it now? Why are metrics as a redem near Bompire now? What could resume? Where's now? Yes, la 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 la. I am So, in those days, they had a lot of challenges, and so they could not be contained in the churches, and so they broke away. Mm -hmm. So, they are like a schism, religious breakaway, they break away from the church and they form their own churches. But uh, they were also influenced by international uh, pre evangelists and preachers like Maurice Serino, Kenneth Hagen, um, this man who died, this man, Mudok, Mudok. Oh, oh, you know, Maurice Morrow, uh -huh, Morrow, uh -huh. Maurice Morrow, uh, is that not it? Uh, Maurice, Maurice Morrow and all of these people, they have influenced the charismatic churches. Now, the charismatic churches put emphasis on health and material prosperity as an important aspect of salvation. You know, in the mainline churches, they believe in the, <laughs> the, the, it's like the theory of um, Jesus who says that it is difficult for, um, it is easier for a needle to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. So many of them is like, uh, Sikaya <laughs> Bonnet, but they and uh, so they live moderately. Tetepan Oshe, a Catholic software, and a Catholic backup, and a Catholic software you saw iPad. Tetoshe met the software and you should have bow a chair. Oshe Montadi, you dream you could to me because you have to live some kind of uh, ascetic life. Church of Pentacles, share sometimes they are very as often be. Still to know, my goodness, the <laughs> money. But look at the charismatic ministers as so often. Hey, there is a, a record of um, the Archbishop Duncan William to have said that uh, I think he has denied it that he was saying that oh, he has money and his uh, even his prey. Uh, uh, nobody uses it and he he wears customized things and all of that. Hey, I know it. For them, largely, they say that if you are saved, they believe in, uh, I, I, in uh, uh, Philippians 419, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. <laughs> That's what they say. 419, 419, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. I believe in I wish above everything that I so believe in as I so pronounce. You know, it must be evident in your life. So you see, Pastor Chris, who said we are in the dream, you know, who named Tadi Oshe. So I'll go up a white suit. Hey, Charlie. I mean, when you look at them, the, the, the story, uh, this one is not a story. Even somebody, this is it's not me, it was somebody who told me, says that he has a boutique shop and then he, there was this pastor who came to buy. And then he saw this, he said, this you today, I was a metal part. I was saying, so see you to anybody. And he mentioned about, so, hey, I'm here. Yeah, the bad job. So, oh, I'm going to job because Osofo must look good. And when Osofo is looking good, the members are happy because they are also for us. I mean, can you imagine? And so uh, that is what they do. Uh, they dress very well, and the emphasis is on Holy Spirit manifestation. And usually they speak English. Brofo, brofo. Hey! Hmm. When the Papa begins to pray, you know what he says? Uh, uh, that, that prayer that has become a recording. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, Yeshua Amashiach, Kai, not just say. <laughs> right. Then we have the New Pentecostal fellowships. These are non denominational and inter denominational fellowships who champion the propagation of the Pentecostal theology. So these are fellowships. They are not churches, but they put emphasis on the Holy Spirit. These fellowships had their uh, target groups. So that, for instance, example like the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship, it is for businessmen alone. Women's aglow, it is for women alone. Scripture union, it is for students and people who live in community. So, so you see, they have their targeted groups. I am not saying that you will not find women in the full gospel business. You see places where one or two women 
are and uh, <clears throat> have been following their movement and women's are glued to there are men when they come on tv and omu vampire you can see hey that's big kukupot kukupot is special sing hey yeah 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 room kesi and omu say omu suja omu omu vampire omu sense you you could say hey hey jebiya hey she she or ghana those days when we're having a lot of fire uh, uh, arson attacks and all of that. No more years had the independence. No more sense you go give your family. No more sense you go no more sense you go so So why would you? So that is just about it. So they have their targeted group and the things that they emphasize the Holy Spirit baptism and other charismatic practices. Many of these fellowships have merged from the US, the full gospel businessmen, women's and glow, scripture union, as some example. And uh, earlier on, you could add Mupa. But now, Mupa, uh, I hear it has become a church. And so you can't add it because it's the new Pentecostal fellowships are not churches, but they put emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, interestingly, because of the charismatic groups that uh, came up, they were having influences. They began to influence, um, as it were, uh, other churches. So in the mainline churches, you find that there were a lot of uh, people, yeah, especially the young ones, who were leaving the church and joining other churches. And so now the mainline churches began to also host some charismatic activities. And so uh, in the various churches, you have certain groups that were coming up uh, in the mainline churches. So historical mainline churches, I mean. So um, uh, these groups started emerging the first related to having particular groups or movement within the main lines the second related to the shift from the periphery to the center now there is a move and so when you go for instance into a catholic church we have the charismatic renewals in the roman catholic church and the the uh, charismatic for no when they yeah yeah no mama has no more yeah yeah deliverance now yeah boom crow for in the Methodist Church, they also have the Methodist Pray Prayer and Renewal Program, MPRP. And usually it is on Fridays or some days in the weekend. In the Presbyterian Church now, it's going down a little bit. Um, in the present, but we used to have the Bible study and prayer group in many of the uh, congregations. Yes, in some congregations, they are still strong, and but in most congregations today, you not find them that much because the entire church, those days it was uh, a little group small groups who were emerging but now because the entire church is becoming charismatic it makes it easier and it makes it uh, yeah and then in the anglican church there were pockets of some small small charismatic groups who were uh, who rose up and were praying and the emphasis was on the holy spirit so you see the charismatic breed is not just even in the Pentecostal churches, even in the mainline, historical mainline churches, they can be found in one way or the other, expressing. And in fact, now the entire church has become charismatic. And now no me kofa method is a solid day in the church. No me say, Mount Sasso, me bombing some vampire. Then the whole bombing some vampire. Otanfubia. Then they started. And I don't know, why is it that when they are doing it, no master song on it? And then they start, Oje, Oja, Susukun, Kruni, Oja, hey, Bakubi Krampo, Obia, the cane by it. Normally, a brother from Obrona Tamfu, Obrona Tamfu, Okum, Okum, Bay, you to me, not Bay, you to me. Anyway, <laughs> that's your theology. And then we have the charismatic movements. Charismatic movement. They started in the 1990s as ministries, but later became churches. Started due to some socioeconomic factors. Nah, um owing to the economic um those 82 there about our here come back Ghana. so many Ghanaians went to nigeria and then they learned about uh these movements i think we have spoken about them so in nigeria they influence a lot of it and so that's why you see that otabel for instance knows why she's you to pain because he was influenced by Ida Hosa. they were here together with actually um oh the papa the papa archbishop duncan williams yeah so uh, you see their way of dressing and all of that uh, it's only ampia kofi that gets out of the frail but they all have their way of doing it 
So examples of the charismatic churches, uh, the Action Chapel, the Perez Chapel. Perez used to be called World Miracle Church. And these churches, sometimes they change their names. <laughs> Perez used to be called World Miracle Church. Now it's Perez Church, ICGC, International Central Gospel Church, Royal House, Mega Church, the same church, Royal House, uh, Lighthouse now, what's a Mega Church? And uh, what's a team? Uh, three or four brand, uh, denominations. Hey, And then Fountain Gate it used to be called Broken Yoke. Uh, the one that uh, is Sudanaba is, uh, but now he's handed over to uh, Anchaba. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yo, they have been casa. But Charlie, uh, there are a lot of interesting things about these churches. That's why I, mean, I want you to stay in religion so that you can learn more and understand better. So, this is a picture of the prayer cathedral. The prayer cathedral. The prayer cathedral. <laughs> when you go there and the puppets are there praying. My goodness. Because in the uh, charismatic churches, they spend a lot of time to put the place in order. I mean, I saw it there. Oh, I them. Who got my dress in the press? Be the angry guy. I saw it there. What pews? This is when we met in Timbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventeen thirty-one. This is what. Go to the charismatic churches. Golden chairs. Foam. I couldn't have done for a foam. Break it. You go to any way. But go to some of my. Some of the mainline churches, cha, a big crowd, plastic chest, and put your say, benches, benches are only a baby in church, not much so. But the charismatic churches, when you enter into the church, say, Nintina, then you know, this kind of area, so you can imagine when you enter into the church, the kind of things that you see, no one can say, ah, every day I go for. Hey, uh, interestingly, look at the charismatic churches, they invest in Sunday music, go to the historical mainline churches. One thing that you always found, oh my God, I'm not my canonical. Now I'm to phone you. Oh my God, my my canonical. The church, the ordinary council, the church, no crowd, no one. So therefore, you know, here at the coupon, oh, we preach the Bible, no my canonical. Now you see, now hello, hello, and then they will be hitting the back, 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 back. Try one, two, try one, two. Hey, but this will not happen in the charismatic churches. Ah, because they invest money. They have people who pray. The prayer tower is paid. The musicians are paid. Yeah, Catholic musicians, Shabunkwa, because of yeah, yeah, Mchio Muka. Jumbe Kwa, those churches, they have a good idea to have a part. Let's come to my people, the new prophetic movements. Yes. These are charismatic movements who later emerged in the 1990s with the emphasis on prophetism. To them, it is also being told some secrets of their lives, and so they put emphasis on prophetism. And then again, when you meet Nika, in a maybe a wound, soon, soon, what they actually are doing your mobile. So they tell you all kinds of things the secrets about your life, the things that you don't know, and the things that you should know. And uh, it's so interesting. Sometimes you chimic can you catch yourself with panty, I wish I read now also, and I hear Edda was it. And now we do the prophetic churches. My goodness, they put emphasis on demons, witches, and my me a bay for or offer a nanoa or yeah, you know, they are able to own panacea and all kinds of things because they see you or some or you see. Now, my mammy, you want to see me. Aha, my boy, that if you be a few, you know, you're sure a name as someone that bang if you ah, now obedient. I say, call a deep for your deep call. Prophet one, prophet one. I said, Ah, me boda hold the bathroom of the Ah, your friend, a sequansma. Ah, who will have a friend a sequansma? Say, see you, be you prepared. Oh, my man is Oh, mala, mala, no dimica. He, he, I said, Ah, a sequansma. Me boda, mum, there, ya chop, bibi. Twenty third February, seventeen thirty one. Ah, a yo date of bed one. See, I'm bam bam bam. I said, Master, Again, some very unorthodox practices are used by them. Otoda will say, Mom for oil, oil green, oil blue, oil, umtiminya oil, kudenya white oil. And Kekadia, those days when Apreku was on show, porridge, cuckoo, every day. Ah, I ready with your It is important to know that these churches are built strongly around their founders, and usually they are not very literate, and yet they want to speak English. And then other people will translate. Sometimes 
what they say that is what you do Inti, they speak all kinds of things and some of them bro for more can in so much and because sometimes hey, if you want to entertain yourself when we're in jail forgive me no i could hear uh otv as a day now she have a paper for a walk now oh she oh me papa me 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 Eh, mini pay or can you piano? What can bro for now? She bro for now, all translating of my goodness. Hey, in the boo, I'm a fancy hat named PP Medayim. They began in the early 1990s. The educational background of their leaders are usually very low compared to the other churches. Uh, examples are Pi Life Prophets, um, uh, Alive Chapel. Yeah, Prophet Sali Fuamaku. He started in Orion and he says that, um, they fall into some of these categories. Uh, I've been to many of his services when he was in Orion. Uh, and then we have the King Jesus Evangelistic Ministry, the Prophet Emmanuel Kweku Apreku. Oh, no, no, see, I'm a friend. No, 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 that was a TSA. Ready, friend. Apreku, my daughter. What is TV is local? Hey, no, this is Apreku. Why, G radio stations in Abos? This is my top, top TV in here. Apeku ni ema waye, fanke kandi apela nanko fo em, e, 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 di a dansi e, na koko, 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 koko akwanchele, a buda mounsiyo, God's Way International Church Bishop Daniel Obinim. Hallelujah, 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 and nansi wajay kong. Hey, ati ye ma refi, na kene ye japon, ma papa ye hon tono sa. Eh, ken, ade ye, 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 uh, even another uh quite yadum, uh huh. Prophet one, oh, no, say, oh, yeah, counselor, so a relationship aspect too. Sometimes when you listen to some of his videos, say, yeah, ready, adding on, not in a software, good dinner software, tell me, yeah, they are the boom, APC, anointed palace chapel, uh huh, or also, oh, oh, yeah, the name, hey, adding on, hmm, it, but you know that. One of the things about these, like I mentioned, is that usually we don't remember the name of their churches. We rather rem remember the one in charge or so forth. Uh -huh. So when you talk about, if I should ask you, Obinim, the name of his church, many do not know, but they know Obinim and they know he has a church. So it's just like that with them. Now the new prophetic use extensive look at, uh, in the local language with English. The expressions are provocative and not refined. Sometimes the kind of things that they say, they claim to be bold. And to me, can say, and a Christian pacho, my main name. Some of the things they say, I can't say them. No, no. How can you say so? Obi will be dying. How can you say say? Obi tiyan ko akubiesika. Now the Obi will be accountable. Hey, also for plan now, man, lotu numbers. Yo, they emphasize the role of maneuvering spirits, misfortunes that can happen. The need to destroy the enemy. They give practical. I say, akwanchere, akwanchere, o konso e debe chul. And then uh, healing and deliverance is their major way of doing things. And then um, the aside the prayer, they use a lot of like I've mentioned, water, oil, stickers, stickers, stickers. Who did the sticker? Ebo bridge mo. Hey, wristbands and a books. Ebo. Now as I bring the the uh, class one and let's uh, quickly take a look at some of the doctrines of uh, the um spiritual uh, the, uh, spiritual and pentecostal church they believe in the bible tomorrow usually those days no mukura bibles are kese kese this time around uh are translated into tablet and i uh, 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 technological a uh, show and then a lot they put a lot on fasting which me i'm i'm to know say usually first Part of the year, you know, my 21 days, middle, mid, mid year, 20. Now, they say, uh, coronavirus, in Bayer, mid year, a uh, 21 days, uh, yeah, wow. and then there will be, they put a lot of prayer, and, you know, they meet a lot of times for all kinds of program. Holy Spirit baptism is very important. Divine healing, divine healing is very important. Spiritual gift with the evidence in speaking in tongues, no more common, and then they believe in the second camp, they, they, they make a lot of noise. Uh, you remember Prophet Udru? Uh huh. Uh, such a Now, what day? Baba Bessia Ninufi or see what she got with Pia Abasro. Nah, what day? A mountain warrior. A farm. 
anointing or ye makai kum chacha, but the anointing or ye afan, no the a ye cross at to chain, no the a shen for chain, no the new way a mere yesu. <laughs> wow, it's interesting. See, I saw for my sorry, I'm not part of me. Kokenya, me sell now. Hey, me de me kogun siya ba na me de babol ato. Wow, the bisu me kwa ba me ba ya. One city kokoni bi eche ba abu ni mo no. Obi ababe yisi kano. Na say ni pawe, say ni pawe. Na bra bobe si ni say. Oh yeah, lucky. This is kano na eche estados. Say guys, kano eche estadosa. And then they put a lot of emphasis on praise and worship. They call it praise and worship. I think that it should be praise and adoration, but yeah, praise and worship, that's what they say. And to know quite sorry, any and to the oh, number one, number one. I could even last or the idea we were to Facebook, you know, or say, or call one of these churches now. Almost to ya, a radi woman, I may de me remash the way they were singing. A radi woman, I may de me remash. Doesn't know, Nimbo say, yeah, yeah, you may of you do web no say oh yeah yeah you yeah, man and go for to this i know wow they they they, they, are, they are able to sing it in a very nice way and then the emphasis on holiness check the spelling of holiness um, yeah so they put a lot of emphasis on holiness and you know because you see crown crown mary adi crown crown mary adi that's in here yeah 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 right so and they i mean uh in the church of Pentecost, for instance you need to dress well but in the prophetic churches well <laughs> Will be a radiate in Tino, yeah. So for this, I'll know there. Obana Sodena, one shed tight Jane Sama, Sebum Pukwane, or back front and front front, you know, or as now, never Manchester, no, and show Hey, Radium, we mobile. Yeah, anyway. So, guys, um, now goody, now goody. So say, Alabam saw she kena. Nti want to thank God and uh, want to thank every one of you for having been part of the discussion. I'm very happy to have come your way today. Again, I'm telling you, if you are not on the Sakai, please get registered. Remember, we are doing 70, 30, 70 for cumulative and then 30 for exam. And so you need to put things together. Go on uh, Sakai and answer five questions. Um, it will be available from seven and so that you can answer them. It is going to end at 10 p.m. You have a lot of time and yet people don't do it. Seven to 10. Oh, how many of your lecturers do that? They usually will give you two hours, three hours period, but I have given you the whole day and yet still people don't do it. Well, that's the best I can do for you because I want every one of you to pass. So take things seriously. I'll mention it again that on the 28th of May, we'll take our exam. So next week on the 14th, I'll come your way with another lecture on ecumenism. And then 21st, it will be your revision week. Then 28th, you would uh, do the exam. I want to take the exam early also because we started our interactions early than the other lectures. And so that then you can, uh, have time for your other courses so that you can do well. I'm praying that you do well and all of you will get A, 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 A in all your courses. But you said amen. Once we have said amen, like we will succeed. So, remember my number, zero two zero. <laughs> so you just send, uh, you just uh, prepare for 28. You, you go on Sakai and answer some five questions next week that we, you say, and then uh, we can proceed from there. If you have any questions, you have any interaction, Talk to the teaching assistants, Muni and uh, Albert. They are very good. They, they are very good. Yeah, they can help you from there, and then we'll see. And as usual, kindly follow the protocols. I'm here alone. That is why I don't need to uh, put on a nose mask. But you can see I have one. So I have one. So 
uh, put on your nose mask if you have to go out. But if it's not necessary, stay, stay in Italy. Let's save ourselves and let's all be careful. And uh, let's wash our hands. Let's avoid touching our faces. Let's avoid things that we don't have to do. And let's take care. And I pray that it is well with you. Okay, so thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.